I believe Dr. Wood, you're presenting for Senator McGuire. Thank you, Madam Chair. And yes, I am presenting on behalf of my colleague in the Senate, uh, Senator McGuire. Great. The bill has been moved by Mr. Gordon and seconded by Mr. Holden. If it pleases the Chair, I'll go ahead and continue with some comments. Is that okay? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Senate Bill uh, 141 is a district-specific bill that clarifies ambiguity in existing code regarding the Humboldt Bay Harbor Recreation and Conservation District's ability to sell after acquired lands. The district is a trustee of legislative, legislatively granted tied and submerged lands. As a trustee, the district is allowed to use revenue generated from its trust, trust lands to purchase and dispose of after acquired lands. A provision in the district's granting statute prevents them from transferring irre, irre, irrevocable grants of fee title. I may have just, I should have just stopped when I was ahead here. Uh, this was intended to clarify with the district that the district did not have the authority to sell sovereign trade, tied, and submerged lands. However, the restriction it already exists not only in the state constitution but in common law as well. Removing the provision relating to the transfer of irrev irrevocable grants of fee title as it relates to after acquired land will provide much needed clarity as to the district's authority. This will benefit the district by clarifying that it can use the funds resulting from the stale of sale of these after acquired lands to reinvest that revenue for the administration and improvement of its trust lands for the state public, state's public, statewide public's use and enjoyment. I have here with me today Sherry Pemberton with the State Lands Commission for any technical questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wood. Witnesses in support? Uh, thank you, Sherry Pemberton, on behalf of the California State Lands Commission. Uh, we are the sponsor, and this is a simple bill that we think will correct an ambiguity regarding the district's uh, administration of its trust lands. Other witnesses in support? Are there any witnesses in opposition? Questions or comments from committee members? The, move, the bill has been moved and seconded. Please call the roll. The motion is due pass and we refer to the Committee on Appropriations, Maine Shine, Gonzalez, Gonzalez I, Alejo, Alejo I, Chu, aye. Chu I, Cooley, aye. Cooley I, Gordon, aye. Gordon I, Holden, aye. Holden I, Linder, Waldron. The measure's out 6 0. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I would uh, move uh, item number two, our consent calendar item. There's been a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Maine Chime, Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Alejo. Aye. Alejo, aye. Chu. Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley. Aye. Cooley, aye. Gordon. Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden. Aye. Holden, aye. Linder. Aye. Linder, aye. Waldron. Seven zero. It's out. We're just waiting on an author. Thank you, Senator Mendoza. I was about to present on your bill myself. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, you would have done a great job. <laughs> a great job, Madam Vice Chair. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Members, 
I'm here to present SB 331, which requires local jurisdictions that establish transparency requirements for labor contracts to apply the same degree of transparency to other contracts for goods and services. Currently, labor management relations are governed by the Myers Millions Brown Act. M However, some local governments have adopted civic openness and negotiations ordinances to promote transparency in labor negotiations. This bill requires that local jurisdictions that adopt these coin ordinances for labor contracts to expand these transparency requirements to contracts for goods and services valued at $50,000 or more. Uh, with me today, we have Jennifer Muir, uh, General Manager to the Orange County Employees Association to speak on we have the bill, and we have other other add-ons as well. Thank you. You thank may you, proceed. Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the uh, committee, thank you so much for your consideration today of this important transparency legislation. My name is Jennifer Muir, and I'm the Assistant General Manager for the Orange County Employees Association, representing 18,000 municipal workers in the County of Orange. As you know, there have been a number of efforts in recent years to promote transparency in government, and those efforts are laudable. In four California jurisdictions, including three in Orange County, elected officials have adopted a program known as COIN. COIN narrowly focuses certain transparency requirements on the process of negotiating with public health nurses, police officers, firefighters, and other employees that make up the public workforce. We believe transparency should not be limited to a jurisdiction's public workforce and instead should be applied evenly to areas where taxpayer money is being spent. Segregating out transparency requirements for only a single group is discriminatory, and it also misses an opportunity to shine a light on how taxpayer money is spent in other areas where transparency is clearly needed. SB 331 levels the playing field by requiring that jurisdictions that have adopted COIN would also apply the same degree of openness to, to other negotiations with other third parties. Again, this legislation would only apply to the four municipalities within California that have adopted COIN ordinances and to cities or counties who in the future evaluate and decide to adopt COIN. Certainly issues resulting from conflict of interest, un unexpected cost provisions, uh, and contract provisions are not limited to the public workforce. There have been a number of recent examples, including recently in the city of industry, where this kind of added transparency in public contracting may have protected taxpayers from abuses. While there has been considerable effort focused on shining a light on money spent on employees, there has been far less scrutiny of the less obvious but often more costly expenditures on outside contracts. SB 331 would provide that needed transparency and turn a narrowly focused program into a fair and equitable one. And otherwise, it takes a program that's much like shining a flashlight into the woods and it lets the, sh the sun shine in. And just one last thing to note, um, we did uh, recently take an amendment to exempt out emergency situations so that jurisdictions would be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to move more quickly in, in the event of an emergency. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, um, members. My name is Tom Dominguez. I'm president of the Association of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs and uh, California FOP Lodge number 18, representing 2,800 uh, sworn members, active and retired, of the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm here in support of uh, SB 331, which represents a critical step towards ensuring transparency in public contracts. Uh, the County of Orange now requires that uh, contracts with the public employees be sub subjected to an unprecedented level of public review before being voted on by the Board of Supervisors. Transparency is not truly transparent if it is being selectively directed at a single group or entity. Private sector contracts worth millions of dollars are routinely, routinely approved uh, by elected officials with little or no public scrutiny. SB 331 ensures that private sector contracts are subject to the same transparency standard to which the county's public employee contracts are held. The men and women of the Association of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs proudly protect the residents of our great county each and every day. And we provide that quality public safety at the lowest per capita cost of any law enforcement agency in the County of Orange. We understand just how precious tax dollars are. SB 331 will give the public a window into how taxpayer money is being spent on private sector contracts and ensure these precious dollars are being spent serving the public. Uh, the Association of Orange County Deputy Sheriffs asks for your support in passing S SB 331. Thank you. Thank you. Further witnesses in support, name and organization only, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Brian Allison on behalf of the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, also in strong support. Mr. Chair, members, Caitlin Vega for the California Labor Federation, also here in support. Good afternoon. Mina Gerges, Deputy District Attorney in Orange County and Vice President 
of the Orange County Attorneys Association, and I respectfully request your support. Hi, Christina Boss Hamilton, representing United Domestic Workers, AFSCME Local 3930, representing 19,000 workers in Orange County, also in support. Randy Perry, on behalf of PORAC, in support of the bill. Derek Barnes, on behalf of Operating Engineers, Local 501, in support. Cesar Diaz, on behalf of the State Building Trades Council, also in support. Justin Panzel, on behalf of the California State Association of Electrical Workers, the California State Pipe Trades Council, and the Western States Council of Sheet Metal Workers, all in support. Thank you. Witnesses in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members. Kelly Astor, I'm appearing today on behalf of th four distinct waste industry trade associations, namely the California Refuse Recycling Council, the Inland Empire Disposal Association, the Salt Waste Association of Orange County, and the Los Angeles County Waste Management Association. We have a wonderful author here, and what we believe to be a terrible bill. Um, and I regret that we're coming in this late with this opposition. I don't like being in this position. We were hoping this bill wouldn't get this far. I don't need to sell our opposition any more than the analysis already does. If you look at paragraph 7B of your analysis, paragraph 7A and 10, that tells you why this bill is a bad idea. I won't get into a beef with labor. It's the last thing our people want. I will mention to you that every single waste hauler in Orange County happens to be under a collective bargaining agreement with local 396, I believe it is. As the analysis indicates, one size does not fit all when it comes to municipal contracting. Our members' contracts are multi-million dollar contracts. They're often bid out under a very competitive process, and even when they're not, when they're simply renewed, there's also a very competitive negotiation that occurs. No city enters into a negotiation anymore with these contracts without having a very highly paid consultant steering them along the way, a consultant which we ultimately pay for. I would also mention, apart from the fact that we're a largely unionized uh, group of employers uh, and that our contracts are frequently put out to bid, we don't draw on general fund sources. In fact, our contracts anymore state, and I've done perhaps a hundred of these, uh, so I'm somewhat of an expert on municipal contracting for waste services. Uh, the contracts provide that we are entering into separate arrangements with the ratepayers for the service. So the idea that we're going to be roped into this battle between Orange County or others that have adopted a coin ordinance and those that are um, here on behalf of uh, trade groups, union groups, we just don't want to be here. We would ask for an exemption of the bill. If coin ordinances are a bad thing, then outlaw them in some fashion. But please, do not implicate the rest of the world in this. It's the wrong bill at the wrong time. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, my name is Don Barnes. I'm with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. I'm an assistant sheriff. I'm here today on behalf of Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins to speak in opposition of SB 331. The Sheriff Coroner in Orange County uh, provides countywide services to more than 3 million residents and direct patrol services to uh, approximately 800,000 residents of Orange County. And while the Sheriff's Department welcomes transparency, this bill will detrimentally impact those we serve as well as our employees in providing those services due to the unnecessary restrictions and costs caused by the mandates of the bill. If SB 331 were made law, critical public safety contracts would be delayed. Each year, the Sheriff Coroner Department alone processes in excess of 200 contracts, which exceed the $50,000 threshold set by this bill. Specialized contracts for the crime lab, often the sole, uh, sole source vendors due to the specialized nature of the equipment, would be adversely affected by the passage of this bill. The restrictions of the bill would further hinder the Sheriff's Department's ability to conduct, uh, conduct its core business providing public safety services and an immediate public safety risk will occur if procurements for law enforcement officers are delayed and they are unable to get supplies and equipment necessary to safely perform their duties. The Sheriff's Department will also be exposed to litigation for not meeting the welfare needs, the mandated welfare needs of inmates entrusted to our care if procurement of goods and mandated services are not met per Title 15. Grant-funded programs and purchases may also be delayed, which are often time-sensitive, time and funding for those purchases may expire before the procurements are completed. 
Delays in contract renewals or con new contract issuance may result in breaks in service or an inordinate amount increase in retroactive contracts. While proponents of the legislation point to openness and transparency, a value that we share and a worthy goal, the additional burdens and cost increases associated with SB 331 will inevitably and unnecessarily strain staff's time, burden budgets that are already stretched too thin, and result in unintended consequences affecting the delivery of public safety services to the residents and visitors of Orange County. Uh, I too would like to share, this is not, I've had conversations, this is not an anti-union position, this is a continuity of operations issue that I'm stressing for public safety. I ask you to, uh, today to consider the negative impacts of the bill as well as the detrimental effects which will be placed upon our employees and consider opposition of AB331. Thank you. Further witnesses in opposition name and organization only, please. Marty Fisher on behalf of California Chamber of Commerce in opposition. Amy Jenkins with Platinum Advisors on behalf of the Orange County Board of Supervisors in opposition. <coughs> Alicia Lewis on behalf of the Orange County Regional Division for the League of Cities in opposition. Thank you. Any other witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, questions or comments from the committee? Uh, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Um, so I'm not completely convinced that COIN is a good thing. Um, and therefore, I'm also not convinced that this is necessarily a good thing. Um, in having served in local government um, and valuing transparency, um, I, I think there may be another way to get there. Um, but this is what's in front of us. And this is what you bring us. Um, and as I look at it, um, I, I, I think I would be far more comfortable um, if we actually did further level the playing field. Um, and one of the things that you talk about is, you know, that this would level the playing field by having not only employee contract issues, but all contract issues have a level of transparency. Um, and um, most of the uh, employee contract negotiations that I was involved with for 13 years as a member of the Board of Supervisors um, were at dollar amounts far higher than 50000 um, So to level the playing field, I'd be far more comfortable um, if there was a much higher dollar threshold on the contract limit, uh, you know, 250,000. Um, that gives me a greater comfort level. Um, uh, I'm not, uh, so I just, I want to share that. Um, and um, um, if there were any consideration of that in the future, it makes, would make it easier for me to, to support this as you bring it today. Uh, thank you, Senator Gordon. I appreciate your comments. And yeah, we'll, we'll take that amendment in the appropriations committee, which is going next. If it gets out of here, we'll make sure we'll make that adjustment for your for your concerns to adjust it to two hundred fifty thousand. That way, it's and I, I think it might help with some of the opposition here that was talking about their other contracts that they do. So I think that might be very helpful to that. So I appreciate that. I'll, I'll take it there if it's okay with the committee. Ms. Ms. Gonzalez. So I want to thank you for bringing this forward. You know, having. Uh, Served in a capacity much um, like OCA's in, in the past. It's amazing to me that cities and counties and districts that decide they want to outsource um, public services at because of a claim of reducing costs um, somehow want to increase the costs for uh, negotiating with their own employees while um, giving an unfair advantage, of course, to those services that are outsourced um, by suggesting that there's no need for equal transparency. So I think. Um, Mr. Gordon had a great recommendation. I'm glad you're willing to take that. I, I think we can um, add to, to the cost of the contract, but uh, it, it's quite frankly what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and so um, I, I'm happy to move this bill. We have, we have a motion from Ms. Gonzalez, second from Mr. Alejo. Uh, any further questions or comments from the committee? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Mendoza, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, I appreciate your... your your, um, uh, for me allow, allowing me to present this bill and just allow me willing to work with the opposition, continue to work with them. I'll be happy to take that amendment in, in the appropriations. I appreciate your, your comments on that. All we're saying is that, you know, I don't think any of us here on the opposition or on the support here 
are against transparency, we're all for transparency, but let's make it equal. If you're going to be transparent for one group, let's be transparent for everybody. That's all we're saying. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We have a motion uh, and a second. I'd ask the clerk to call roll. The motion is due pass, and we refer to the Committee on Appropriations, Mainshine. No. Mainshine, no. Gonzalez? Gonzalez, aye. Alejo? Alejo, aye. Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley? No. Cooley, no. Gordon? Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden? Aye. Holden, aye. Linder? No. Linder, no. Waldron? No. Waldron, no. Your bill is out five to four. Congratulations. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, while we're waiting for our next presenter, I'd ask uh, we have a, some. I'd ask the clerk to go back through items for people who need to add on. Item one, Senate Bill 141, McGuire, Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, aye. Final vote on that is 8 0. Waldron, aye to no. <laughs> Final vote is 7 to 1. 7 to 1. Item two, the consent calendar, Senate Bill 184, Governance and Finance. Do pass and we refer to the Committee on Appropriations, Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, aye. Final vote is 9 to 0. <laughs> Item number 3, Senate Bill 331, Mendoza. Um, we have all the votes there. Item 4, Senate Bill 379, Jackson. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Waldron. Not voting. Linder not voting to aye. Waldron not not voting. Final vote on that is eight zero. Item number five, Senate Bill four seven seven, Leva. Holden. Holden aye. Linder. Uh, item five, four seven seven. Linder aye. Final vote is seven zero. Here. Senator Lara, thank, thank you. you. Welcome, uh, and you are here on item number eight, SB 562. Welcome. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, SB 562 provides specific authority to the City of Long Beach to develop a new downtown civic center. This development is part of a significant revitalization and modernization plan for downtown Long Beach. In, tw in 2007, the existing civic center, which houses City Hall and the main public library, was found uh, to be seismically unsafe. An evaluation of the cost to repair the building concluded that it was more prudent to build a new civic center. Uh, this bill provides statutory authority to the City of Long Beach to approve a public-private partnership that will provide the best value for the city taxpayers. This modern approach to project financing would allow the city to rebuild its public infrastructure without imposing a tax increase on residents or burdening the city's general fund. The project is being built uh, under an innovative P3 agreement that is a hybrid of existing design build and a lease lease back model. I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. Witnesses in support? We have a motion and a second. Diana Tang from the City of Long Beach, Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for voting on this bill today. Um, as the Senator has stated, this is an incredibly important project for the City of Long Beach, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Paul Gonzalez representing the Port of Long Beach. Great author, great bill. Ask for I vote. Any other witnesses in support? <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. Did he, he did, did Senator Lara in, write those remarks for you? Or did, <laughs> uh, witnesses opposition, seeing none, it, uh, it is, Senator, an excellent bill. Please to support it today. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the committee? Seeing none, you may close. I respectfully ask for your eye votes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ask the clerk to call the roll. The motion is due pass. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Alejo. Aye. Alejo, aye. Chu. Aye. Chu, aye. Cooley. Cooley, aye. Gordon. Aye. Gordon, aye. Holden. Oh, really? Holden, aye. Linder. Linder, aye. Waldron. Aye. Waldron, aye. 
Motion House 9 0. Congratulations. Thank you, Chair Members. Uh, and today's meeting of the Local Government Committee is adjourned. Thank you, Members.